Beer. After a long day, there is nothing better than a cold beer. For me and for most, beer is a refreshing beverage that goes well with everything. In fact, it goes well with being on the couch, by the grill, on the lake, in the shower, definitely in the shower, and everything in between. When I find myself enjoying a cold one every now and then, I start to wonder, what is beer and how is it brewed? I wasn't sure if it was just me who was clueless about beer, but it turns out I'm not the only one. You guys know how beer is brewed? <laughs> not really, no. <laughs> oh, I should not be the one you're asking this. She works at the brewery. <laughs> um, a little, I know a little bit about it. No, but I know hops grow on vines. Only a little bit of the process, not much. <laughs> Beer comes in all different styles, sizes, and flavors, arranging from cans to bottles. Each one is unique in its own way, from small to large cans like this one, and flavors you could never think of. No wonder why beer is appealing to all audiences. But we still haven't learned how beer is brewed. I met up with Beaver Island Brewing Company in St. Cloud to get a better idea of how beer is brewed and canned from start to finish. We start off with the malt, which is a uh, malted barley. Um, and when we get that malt in, um, we run it through a mill to crush it, to expose the, uh, the inner kernel of that malt. The malt next door that we milled, uh, tomorrow morning we'll go up this white auger here, and drop into the mash louder ton. And as it's dropping in, water, hot water is sprayed on it. And then uh, you get what is called the mash. The enzymes in the malt break down the dextrins in, into uh, simple sugars that the yeast will later consume in the fermentation process. We let that mixture sit for an hour. Conversion process takes place. And then we separate the liquid from the grain by transferring the liquid over to the brew kettle. Once the liquid is moved to the brew kettle, it is brought up to a boil. This process kills any bacteria, caramelizes some of the malt, and they also add hops to the boil to add bitterness, flavor, and aroma. Boil is usually a hour long, and after that boil is done, we'll turn on a whirlpool in the brew kettle, which will spin it. it separates the solids uh, from the liquids. The solids stay behind as the liquid is transferred to the fermenter and chilled down. This is now ready for the yeast to be added. The yeast consumes the sugar and turns it into alcohol and carbon dioxide. This process can take up to five days depending on the beer. Once the yeast has settled, it'll stay in the tank and it could take anywhere between two to five days for the beer to mature. This is then transferred to a serving tank where it is carbonated and ready to be packaged. That's pretty much the process after, you know, they get done packaging it, either kegs or cans here. Although the process sounds complex, it's pretty simple when you boil it down. So now that we have learned the first ingredients in brewing beer is malted barley and water, hops are gonna add bitterness and depending on how much you add will determine the style of beer. Typically, large amounts of hops are associated with IPAs. Now that Chris has explained the brew process, I was curious to know how different styles and flavors are created. A popular brewing company in Minneapolis, known as Inbound, has been adventuring out on unique and different beer styles, such as a beer called Contains Bees, a peanut butter honey blonde ale. But what I was really interested to learn more about is their sour beers, such as Pink Guava Lemonade and others. I met up with John from Inbound to learn a little bit more. At Inbound, we brew a few different types of sours. Uh, we brew a Berliner Weiss, uh, we brew a kettle sour. Um, typically our kettle sours are our goza or our fruited sours. And we also brew wild sours. To make a, a sour special, um, we use one of three different things. Uh, lactobacillus, uh, pediococcus, and or bretomyces. For a sour beer, we will brew the beer, keep it in the kettle, we will pitch it with a lactobacillus um, enzyme. That sours the beer. John gave me a tour and even let me sample some of the beer right out of the tank. I was still curious to learn more about this peanut butter beer. 
the peanut butter honey blonde contains bees is a, is a one of our newer beers in the last year and a half. Uh, we started off with contains nuts. Contains nuts is a peanut butter milk stout, a darker winter kind of a fall winter version. What we wanted to do is create something that was lighter, that had that same peanut butter essence, but was still drinkable uh, for summer months. So what we create. It's, is it really just peanut butter added with other ingredients? Yep, it's uh, basically we add, you know, we have a, a particular malt bill to get some desired flavors out of the malted barley. And then we also add peanut butter, we add honey, and then we add a little bit of vanilla to it as well. I haven't tried a peanut butter beer before, so this should be interesting. This beer was really refreshing and easy to drink. So what I've come to learn about the brew process is that in the beginning stages, most beer is created similar. But after that is when the rule book is completely tossed out the window. The brewer has the ability to add any flavors and let their imagination run wild. Drink that uh, brings strangers together, friends together, relatives. I mean, it's just awesome to see people come together and enjoy a beer. Breweries around, they're doing all kinds of events and it all focuses on bringing people together. Coming together, having good times over a can of beer, over a bottle of beer. Beer's a social drink for me, so I love it. So what I learned from this process is that not all beers are created equal. In fact, each beer is unique in its own way. I didn't know it at first, but brewing beer is an art. And to brew a good beer, it takes skill, repetition, and science.